This is also going to be really, really odd. I don't know that we've ever driven something back from a buy. Have we, Alex? Never. Will it make it? Morning, Alex. Morning. How are you? Pretty good. How are you? Great. I've got a Mustang we're to go rescue today. Sweet. Edmond, Oklahoma, which for us is relatively close. Yeah. So I think today we'll run about 500 miles, maybe 600 miles. Yeah. Um, it is a one of one car per the Marty Report, which is great. Sweet. It is an R code. I might just leave it at that. Really? It's extremely rare color on another bus that you guys haven't seen yet that's in the warehouse that oh, Alex really? is just about finished with. We'll match those two together and see what you think. So think in your mind what's extremely rare color on a Mustang. Mm -hmm. We've got two of them to show you, so one will show up in the update. So grab your cup of joe and let's go. Edmond, Oklahoma, and that three hour drive took four and a half hours because traffic is really bad on 35, even on a Saturday, but that's okay. So we've been working on this deal for about a year. Let's go see what we got. Hi. Good afternoon. You Linda? Yes. Okay, nice to finally meet you. Nice to meet you too. This is Alex. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice that's to meet Zach you. Zach on the camera. Hello. And Alex is my Mustang expert. All right. As far as putting them together. Oh, okay. Let's see what we got. <laughs> so we've been working this deal for about a year, right? It's been, a, well, my husband passed away September 30th, so it's okay. been since then. So. Okay. Uh, this right here in the garage on the rotisserie. So, uh, and Jason, who gave us the lead, said yes. your husband was a, somewhat of an expert body guy. Is that correct? He, well, he did. Uh, he did all the body work has been done. He's he did it. Okay. So he actually took a class at a, a you know vocational technology center. Uh, in auto collision and learned how to do all the stuff. And okay. So, all right. Yeah. Looks like a nine inch Alex. So, yeah, and I don't know, every, you know, whatever goes with it, just. Just crap. goes with it, huh? <laughs> Engines over here, I know. And okay. That's the correct one for the car. Correct intake? You know those well, that's for sure. And I've got the Marty report I'll give you for it. And That'd be great. Yeah. If you could grab that, that'd be cool to look it's at. It's one of one. Okay. So, so the has got primer up, that's okay. Boom. So it is an R code. Cool. All right, so it means it's going to be a shaker hood car, which is great. Yeah. It is a four speed. We've got, a, we've got the five for the four speed. Ooh, and the color code is Gulfstream Aqua. Same as our 68. Yeah. Yeah. Oklahoma. It looks like 1990 inspection. So that's good. There's a carpet right here. Should have been too rusty. So what I like about that is, uh, well, she's got the Marty report. It might say it, but out of the four-speed Arco cars, there was only 200 in Gulfstream Aqua. Thank you. What does it say? How close am I? 216. 216. Close enough. Yeah. Only one with an AM radio. Sport deck rear seat. That's nice. 350 track, track lock. lock. That's a good gear just for driving. Power disc brakes. It's got power steering, I noticed inside. Great car. Now let's just see how many of the important pieces here. So we saw the rear and we saw the intake. I saw this out of a, the quarter of my eye. What you got? 428. Is the motor there? Yeah. All right, very good. Now That's I, important. <laughs> and I've got more things in this AMC. other garage too. No. So let me open it up too. Alex, disc brakes. Yep. So we found the rear end disc brakes intake already. There's the seats. Oh, look what I spot. A really important piece. Yeah, a lot of the upholstery's up there on that side. Uh, shaker. Oh, yeah. Okay, there there's the gauges. Glass. Ooh, this is, it is blown apart. Good thing we brought Zach. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see what's in the other garage. I've seen a lot of the important bits so far. So, in fact, he went to your uh, dealership 
at one time when he was alive because really? we go down there and see our daughter and so okay very cool he came and did that so there i know there's a lot of parts up on that table i'm sure it is okay so it like seat belts no. do you notice that on the martyr report i uh, did not actually that's, that's a pretty unusual option actually to see so Two. Two of Deluxe Bells. So a really good option car. And that's two of the Goldstream Offering cars. Two. Look at that. That's an important piece for the hood. Boom. Yeah, he was Just what you needed, Alex. Another puzzle. <laughs> he was in the process of trying to categorize everything and put it in place when he got too sick where he couldn't do any more, so. Hmm. Cool. <laughs> well, this isn't going to be a quick, easy, well, not an easy, <laughs> a quick load. Have you seen a carburetor, Ops? I haven't yet. I haven't either, but a lot of ways to go. Would you sell one of those models? Uh, depends on which one. The black Shelby? This one? I actually cannot sell that, and that's because oh, it's we had a Shelby just like this. Yeah, you had a 67 had GT 350. Yeah, GT 350, and uh, so he bought this because it looked like our car. It was Sweet. night mist blue. Ooh, that's yeah. a great color. With the white stripes, yeah. Great color. And we sold it at the Meekum Auction in Tulsa two years ago. Very good. Yeah, that's a that. great car. So, I don't think I've seen that one of those before. That's kind of neat. Yeah. yeah. 65. What is it? Just a radio made out of 65 radio. gauges? It's a radio. Uh-huh. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. I, I haven't seen that before. So you can tell. I like tell. your lamp as well. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah. 67 Shelby. I don't think I've seen one of those. Either. No, I would sell that. I don't I don't need that. But I, I cannot sell the one that looks like what we had. So. What's the price on the lamp? Um... I don't even know what to tell you. Yeah, that's neat. I haven't seen what it's like. This is actually what the car is supposed to look like. Uh -huh. We bought a model of that. That's the color and everything. Sure is. That's Cobra everything. Jet and everything. Yep, yeah. that's what it's supposed to look like. That's cool. Well, we'll make it look like that again. So, that's awesome. He will be happy about that. So. Love it. He was planning on keeping it original. So. That's cool. We debated that on the way up here. We generally build everything original, but... <laughs> yeah. We're considering putting a 427 sign over in that car. Oh, are you? Yeah. The reason we have all these Legos is my daughter's moving this weekend, so my grandson did not want them to get torn up in the move, so <laughs> I have his Legos. <laughs> well, we're going to look at it all through that stuff, sure. but I've seen enough that I'm going to pay what we discussed on the phone. Okay. So we have a deal? We have a deal. All I need is the title. <laughs> I've got the title. It's in there. All right. I'll get you paid, and then uh, Alex is going to come up with a plan. Yep. <laughs> it's gonna take a while to load this. Yes, it is. How long, right, cool. how long of a time frame do you think it'd take you from the way it is to redo it? An hour. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're amazing. To get inside the trailer an hour. Uh, probably our paint shop's backed up, but I can do everything else in 60 days. Really? Yeah, the paint the paint works problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I would think that realistically that car will be done in a year. Yeah. Okay. But if we if I get it through the paint shop and get it to Alex, yeah. Uh, but we won't be working on it full time either. Okay. So yeah. I would could he do it in sixty days? Yes. Yeah. But <laughs> no, it, it kind of needs to be on the side where we're working on some of the other ones. I would love when you get it done if you get to meet some pictures. Oh yeah. I would love that. Absolutely. So that would be great. All right, let's go for the plan, Alex, and how so we're gonna get it in uh, there. I trust y'all to get what you know goes with it, and like I said, I. I figure you'll want to take the rotisserie. I have no need for it. Absolutely. So. You know, well, that's that's pretty much the only way we can load it. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. Put that off there. It's had a lot of metal work, or a lot of prep work already done. Yeah. He'd come out and sand on it just whenever you get to thinking about it because things wouldn't look right. <laughs> it looks like it probably just needs maybe another a week of massage then. Yeah. You could probably shoot it. It's got red oxide on the bottle already. Did you see that? I saw that. The look really, really good. You can tell you're starting to cut the gaps in already too. Yeah. You're not <laughs> That's 
So we need another project, but it's a rare one. <laughs> so that's cool. All right, you want to do car first or parts first? Motor training in the car. Okay, I'm in for that. Then we load a lot of the parts in the car. Yeah. So this trailer, which I don't even think you guys have seen on camera before, yeah, is a kind of our rough storage trailer. And when we have something that's on a rotisserie, which we just had a Jeep scramble that sat in there for a while, yeah. we know where it is, and then when we're ready for it, we'll pull it out of the trailer. Mm -hmm. That way we don't have to take up room for the warehouse. So we're anticipating it might be a little while before that goes in the paint shop. Yeah. But maybe not. We'll see. So when we've got a car completely blown apart like this, we start running out of room in the trailer. We'll fill up the shelves, we'll fill up the package trays, we've got a bunch of blankets to wrap up stuff, but we've got these rubber mats that we lay in the floors of the car so it won't damage the floors because we don't want to dent the floors from the top side. So we'll load up some of the heavier stuff in here and uh, kind of helps a little bit with space. You're getting old. I know. <laughs> 17 more years. <laughs> 17. So we'll lay the cooter parts over here. Pretty cool. Look at that. Hidden headlights. Cool. I saw some cougar taillights in there too. Yeah, they're on the shelf. Which you can use a fire stick for a Shelby, right? If it's got one. Look at the wheel in this. Yeah, I see the steering wheel. There's some important pieces on that. Yeah. shelf for sure so according to the Mario report it is an am radio car there's original philco radio for it, it looks to be a nice set of gauges showing 77,000 miles i'll we'll set these in the counter in here in the trailer make sure they get put up carefully outstanding super important piece of the car shaker hood ram air r code looks to be correct and original love it Hopefully these will clean up. Deluxe door panels. You never know until you clean them right out. Yep. Here's a factory deck lid, which doesn't look bad. Uh, original Gulfstream. I think I'd rather put this back on than that one. What do you think? I think so. Yeah. That front working was okay, but factory stuff's better. It's not rusted out. Car's really solid. You know, as you get older, Alex, a cane has a lot of uses. Oh, yeah. I can just pull with it. Not working very well though. <laughs> One, two, three. Smooth. Can you push it? I feel like I'm doing all the work. Too legit to fit? Oh. I'll be here all day. What do you think, Alex? Do I'm walking it off. For, do what? I'm walking it off first. I haven't thought about doing that, but you guys don't like it when I use my feet for a foot. Because my foot is about a foot. All day. <laughs> Gonna work? Should fit, barely. Well, it doesn't. We'll strap the tag in closed. Yeah. Deal? Deal. I need your help for a second. I got another solid plan. What's that? I'm going to make that a solid surface so we can put a lot of parts down there. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> it's just like a glove. Not really, but it'll work. Ready for some water. You want to pick up that side, I'll pick up this side? Yeah, no problem. Can't sit in the car. That'd be easy, but... 
I don't think it would go. Yeah. Let's do this. We can put that over back in the truck. I don't think it'll go that high. How high? Too high. Look at that bottom shelf we created. That's some incredible organization down there. Pretty cool. There's the highlight of the reel. Hey guys, Chris Fix here, and today I'm going to show you how to replace a water pump in a car. This is my dad's daily driver. I don't think that's right. Back and forth. So this car's been parked since 1990 when the prior owner found it. Somebody had put a 302 with a four-speed in it. So here's the 428 motor. Right here, so obviously we'll be going back with the 428. But we got a 302 with a four-speed for some other project, right, Alex? Yeah. All right, so what is your plan for that? Well, as long as we get that. It's four and a half. Seven. I don't know if that'll go up here or not. Put it like that. Oh, even better. I like it. That wasn't the plan, but it works. Come on in. All right, I like it. Come on down. I like it right there. A lot. Okay. So that's pretty outstanding. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I was planning on going that way, but it fits better like that. So now all we have to do is get a completely disassembled Mach 1 in here and a disassembled 428 Cobra Jet motor and a 9 inch rear end, among other sundries, various things, and then we're on our way. Mag stars. Very cool. For a 67 GT500. I like it. What'd you find? Some mag stars. No way. Yeah. Let me see. <laughs> wow. Well, we definitely need those. We're actually picking up two more 67 Shelby's in the near future. Let the cat out of the bag. Mm -hmm. Man, let's get this thing loaded and get on to the next gig. I know. Let's get a little long-winded. <laughs> this thing is really blown apart. This and clean it, give it to Alex for his birthday. What? <laughs> you don't know. All right, I want to thank you for being such a good caretaker of that car. No problem. Since 1984, so my math is correct today, it's 39 years. Yep. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. One of uh, around 200 four speed Goldstream Aqua R codes. Pleasure to meet you. Nice Let's to meet you. Let's go to the ride home. Uh, you, you have a safe trip home. This one cool lady, she used to drag race a 67 GT350 automatic <laughs> in bracket. That's cool. All right, have a great day. All right, you too. Oh, guess where we're going? You said Mustang. Correct. We're leaving here. We're leaving oh, yeah. Evan and going to Mustang. We used to go to the Mustang shows in Mustang. Really? <laughs> yeah, they well, have them. But we're going to Mustang with a Mustang to buy a Jeep. So, here we go. <laughs> 
All right, where are we now and how did we get here? Well, we've got the single car trailer with us. On our way out here, we'd already left and we got a lead from Mike Tabby out of Michigan who chases a lot of Jeeps for us, Mustangs, Corvettes, everything. Mm -hmm. So we were already on the road. We got to Edmond, been communicating back with Kevin who's got this white 89 Islander. So we went from Edmond to Mustang, which is only like 35 miles. So let's go meet the owner. Kevin, how are you, sir? <laughs> well, thanks for holding it. Yep. I appreciate that. Yep. So he gave us a gentleman's agreement to let us look at it and hold it for a while. So let's go check it out. This is Alex. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And that's Zach on the camera. How you doing? All right. So how long have you owned it? Uh, about eight years. Eight seven. years. Okay. Long time. Yeah. I think, uh, I believe I'm the second owner. The uh, original owner was an older couple that pulled it behind a RV for a number of years. Ooh, I like so, to hear that. That means a lot of the miles aren't driven yeah, miles. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but yeah, it's the 90 Wrangler. It's got the original 42 straight six in it. So the Islander package was the paint stripes, the painted flares, special gray interior. Also the 20 gallon gas tank. Right, here. plastic 20 gallon gas tank, and they were tilt steering wheel and your limited slipper and okay so this is cool i see this i didn't even look inside yet so it's an automatic so this was a special order jeep mm -hmm. so this is an spo jeep because they only came rpos with a five speed mm -hmm. ac yeah alex is pretty good at, uh, at these uh wrangler so what colors do these come in white well i don't know the specific colors that's but okay white red blue teal yellow black nope no, you got that's it, it. And what else I like about this Jeep is Serpentine Drive. Look at that. California Jeep. Yep. Right there. See? Boom. Which means it hopefully is not rusty. No. So these Islander seats are special and this material is really tough to get. I just happen to have some. It's not for sale, so don't even ask. <laughs> Now, we got the great cloth, so this is, there was two different styles of seats. Yeah, the, uh, the original. This one, this one was probably a cloth Jeep, right? Yeah, it was all cloth. Yeah, and the reason why is it's got the, uh, it's got the quiet package carpet. Okay. So with the quiet package carpet, it's usually going to be the cloth seats. So, yes, I don't know if we have one of those cloth seats, but probably. I would think so. And it's got AC. Can we hear it run? Yeah. Another reason I was really attracted to this Jeep, we were able to run the Carfax on the way here and see that it was a California Jeep, but the fax is automatic. Yeah. Which I actually did see that yet. That's a good suggestion, dude. Somebody actually knew how to tune that Weber. Is it a Weber or an Impy? Uh, Weber. Weber. Yeah, it has an electronic control carburetor. We took it off and put a Weber on there. That looks like it's been on there for a long time. Oh, Do you have the original air cleaner by any chance? Uh, no. Okay. You have the original wheels? No, I, that's actually how I bought it was with the, the later model wheels. Okay, my only request is you let Alex take it around the block and he makes it back, I'll buy it. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'll stay here for collateral. <laughs> it's a neat Jeep. I like it. Let's see if I remember how to drive a Jeep. This isn't going to have AC on the way back. Didn't you want a Corvette, Zach? Yep. You want to stop? Oh, it's winking at us. How cute. <laughs> it's a tight little Jeep. Brakes work. 
gonna suck for Dennis and you, Zach. No radio. Does that mean I have to talk to Dennis the whole time? Yeah. Ugh. I think it's good to go. Fox just gave it two thumbs up. This is also gonna be really, really odd. I don't know that we've ever driven something back from a buy. Have we, Alex? Never. Will it make it? Yeah. Okay. All right, sir, you got a deal. I'll pay you what we committed to on the phone. Sounds good. And actually how I got this, Kevin was gracious enough to take my phone call because he had a lot of people come to look at it. I offered him more than he was asking for it. Yeah, I actually had somebody this morning that was going to have money for it on Monday, but he was offering less than you were, so I was like, huh? There you go. So that's yeah. how we won, right? Yeah, yeah. Right, cool. Let's get you paid. Cool. The bottom's really good. Yep. I mean, we have some really nice YJs in the warehouse if, if you guys are looking for one that aren't listed because yeah. when we find them, we just buy them. And we don't necessarily have time to work on it right now, but anytime you can find a rust-free YJ, in my opinion, with less than 80,000 miles, you just got to buy it, right? Oh, yeah. But the ones we have, most of the ones we have have less than 20,000 miles on them. They're great. But power steering, power brakes, tilt, automatic AC, 63,000 mile White Islander. Yeah. It's a great find. Man, I am hungry. Me too. I'm starving. <laughs> Zach, are you hungry? Oh, yeah. He's never hungry. He doesn't eat a whole lot. Get his burrito. So, it is 5.45 and none of us have eaten today yet. Yep. So hopefully there's some good food in Mustang. All right, Kevin, first of all, thanks for holding it for us. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for being a great caretaker of that for eight years. Yeah. Last question. Favorite place to eat locally here in Mustang? Toledo's. Mm -hmm. What's your second favorite? Uh, I don't know. S and B's isn't bad. Or that little hamburger joint. What's it called? S and B's. S and B's? Yeah. Okay. These guys asked for a hamburger. So it looks like it's going to be S and B's, guys. Is that good? Okay. I was yeah. going to say, or, or Del Rancho. I'm sure you've, you've been to Del Rancho before, haven't you? I don't think so. Del Rancho's all over the place. What but, kind of food do they have? Uh, they're, they're like uh, steak sandwiches and, and hamburgers and that kind of thing. Well, so. we'll look at both of them. Uh, I'll tell you what, um, I think we're going to go to S and B's. It sounds good. Yeah. And uh, if you want to meet us there, follow us. If not, Thanks for your time. Yeah, no worries. Okay. You guys have a good day. You too. Appreciate it, guys. Yep. Let's go eat. We're starving. So we're in the 1990 Islander with 63,000 miles. And the good thing is, you said a lot of these miles were tow miles by the previous owner. Therefore, I think we can make the 250 mile drive back to Dallas. Now, I can't remember taking a buy that we bought and actually driving it back. So hopefully this will be an uneventful trip and we'll make it. But if not, Zach will show everything that happens. Flat tires, breakdowns, whatever. But we're going to Del Rancho. We shifted gears because Kevin said it's a much cooler restaurant. So let's go eat. We were starving. Okay, Alex just told me he needed a zip tie to fix something. We got our first noise in the engine bay. I can't make this up. Inside this console, right there, was one zip tie. Let's hope it works. So, there you go. Boom. So it's making a noise like something was hitting the fan. Kind of was. Show them what was happening. So you got part of the AC system just hitting the uh, alternator fan. It was making a lot of noise. Yeah. So this is our first stop. We made it about a mile. And why are we, <laughs> why are we here? Well, we're at Boomerangs. We're going to eat because Alex liked the look of this place and he spotted the Chevelle. So we squirreled and didn't go to the other place and we stopped here. Pretty and much. I, and I agree, it looks neat. Yeah. So if the food's bad, it's Alex's fault. Not I, Kevin's fault. I doubt it. Okay. Repair one and we didn't even have to use a zip tie. Put that back in the console in case we need it. Yep. It's gonna be an interesting ride home. Let's eat first. I will get the Dagwood sandwich. No vegetables and no mayo. I was going to get that too because I've never actually seen that on a menu. I've just seen it on television. The Dagwood? Yeah. yeah. 
Is it good? Mm -hmm. Okay, I want the Dagwood sandwich also, but I want everything on it. Okay. Loaded up to the max. Absolutely. And then I'm also going to go with Tana's recommendation on the Bacon Ranch cheeseburger. And can you put jalapenos on that? Absolutely. Cool. Nacho tots, fried mushrooms, and fried pickles. Which one do you want to try first? All of them. I'm going to go with a nacho tot. Got ranch on it, but I think it needs a little bit of ketchup. Awesome, do that. Just destroy that top. Ha, that's really good. Especially since we had to eat all day. Mm -hmm. Fried mushroom. Pickle. Mm -hmm. That's a good way to start a meal. So Dagwood sandwich, I had to teach Alex what this is. Yep. There was a television show, show, it was either in the 40s or the 50s or something like that. A guy named Dagwood would make these super tall sandwiches, taller than even a club sandwich. You pile them high. That's why it's thick. You have to get a whole bunch of stuff on it, not a little bit of stuff. So yeah. This is definitely the best buy, Dagwood sandwich. Really good. Better than the BLT. So this is the most recommended by the employees here, the Bacon Ranch Cheeseburger. Mm -hmm. Supposedly one of Elvis's favorites. It's good too. And messy. So we made it our first 30 miles. I'm trying to talk really loud because Zach just did a TV meter on his phone. It's crazy loud here because it's an old top. It needs to be replaced. It's actually a 90. But to put that in perspective, that's like a blow dryer on high in your ear. But the Jeep's running and driving great. We're going 65 miles an hour. All the gauges work. Even the clock is working. Actually, really a pleasure to drive. You can tell it's a low mileage Jeep. Showing 63,000 miles, but it's had a lot of more tow miles. So, wish us luck. We got about 200 more miles to go. Back to the shop. Oh, and by the way, we just discussed it. The restaurant was great. It was cool to see a Dagwood sandwich. Something I've only heard of as a kid. Never saw it on a menu. And the nacho tater tots were great. So, if you're a Mustang, you see boomerangs go in. Good thing. So, we're over 100 miles into the run. Actually, runs and drives great. I'm gonna get some WD-40 suppliers and see if I can get this up because it's crazy loud there. Then we need gas. We're going to clean the windshield, Alex. Can you reach it? <laughs> I think I can reach it. <laughs> That's awesome. We need both sides from around her. I don't think the windshield's been cleaned this thing in quite a while. Just doing some maintenance. It's like I've done that before. It's off. We're good. Really? Yep. You know why this Jeep isn't rusty, Dennis? Do what? You know why this Jeep isn't rusty? Because it's from California. All the oil everywhere. Well, there you go. But you know what? The ones that are like that always clean up better. Yeah. Because you can tell that this thing has never been cleaned and never been pressure washed. And those are the ones I like the best. They come out better. Like you said, it's protected. Yeah. Huh. And it's full. It's full. It's got some pretty tall gears in it. Really? Yeah, what was the fast we were going? 70 maybe? It's got some four tens or something? I don't know what it's got. I don't think it's got four tens, but I bet it's got 354s. Or 373s. Alex, I need a pair of pliers. <clears throat> this is a WD-40. I think they're full, Dennis. You think it's full? Yeah, I think so. Well, I wanted to clean that part off back there. Oh, okay. It hasn't been washed either. <laughs> Uh-oh. What's he gonna do? There really isn't a trick. I've never done it. But the thing is, you get some lube, which we're out of. Zach took the, took the rest of it and suppliers, and just zip it back up. Wow, 
like that. That's it. All right, we're in good shape now. We just gotta take a super unleaded, fix the window with WD-40 and some pliers. I guess Alex did that. We got some new noise in the front. Not sure what that is, but I don't think it's anything major. Appears to run and drive really well. Check the oil. The oil's fine. 113 miles to go, and I say that because 13 is my lucky number. So here we go. Success. Nothing like a YJ Wrangler. If you've never owned a 76 to 86 CJ, 87 to 95 YJ, or 97 to 06 Wrangler, is nothing like it, right, Alex? Right. 235 mile run. Drove great. Broken in. So what a great day to be alive, sir. Absolutely. We rescued a super rare 69 Mach 1, which we, uh, Super attracted to the Cobra Jet cars over the last three years. We've got a stack of Cobra Jet cars, a stack of Cobra Jet motors. Alex knows them well. Again, that was one of around 200 at Gulfstream Aqua. Crazy rare R code, shaker hood car. This put a smile on my face and Alex's face because he's driven YJ's most of his life. Put a ton of miles on him, as have I. This is a neat find, a 63,000 mile 90 Islander. An SPO, which was special order because it's an automatic. California delivered, so no rust. Power steering, power brakes, tilt, and AC. Actually, a really special Jeep. Yep. So I hope you guys enjoy the day as much as we did. You can't beat buying a Mustang in a Jeep. No. Beep, beep, you can't beat it. <laughs> yes, I said it. So again, if you guys enjoyed it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's easy, it's free. We're on the road to 500,000 subscribers. Alex, Zach, and Kelsey have worked incredibly hard for that. Yeah. And if you're watching us on Facebook and YouTube, thank you for that. Like, tag, share, and follow. We'll see you next week.